Bulletproof Radio, a state of high performance. The other big thing that happens when you age uh, is just tissue loss or sarcopenia. And, and you, we see older people, they just have less muscle mass. And it's okay, you don't right. have the muscle mass of a bodybuilding 25-year-old, but you see a linear decline in spermidine levels and a linear decline in muscle as you age. What does it do for maintaining muscle mass? We're kind of back in the same place. So, so number, so for bone and muscle, one of the big things is increasing stem cell production. So increasing okay. stem cell production in the muscle, also for bone, which is why it's so helpful for osteoporosis. So you know, those are both you know, loss of stem cells in the muscle, loss of stem cells in bone is one of the things that's now is now ca- causing that demise as we age. And so that's probably its big effect is 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 on stem cell production. But again, if I'm going to increase improvement in mitochondria, again, muscles, mm-hmm. lots of mitochondria and muscle like cells, right? And improving the volume of mitochondria is going to make the muscles more functional. So it will both increase muscle stem cells so I can build muscle more easily. But number two, increase the function of that muscle so I, I have better muscle contraction. You know, muscles, your aging currency, you, 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 know, you, you, you need muscle to survive. I mean, I, I'm really, I, mean, I do a lot of weightlifting and I'm really, you know, adamant to my patients that you can't just be doing cardio. We have all these people who are just doing cardio, 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 that you've Doesn't got work. to be lifting weights. You've got to be going strong. This is going to allow you now, because if I don't have, you know, good stem cell production anymore, you know, I'm 70 years old and I'm really taking care of myself. And now I'm telling this 70 year old to go lift weights. They're going to have a really hard time. So if I can increase stem cells first by using spermidine, um, you know, for a good 12 week course, again, maybe at a little bit higher level in that elderly patient, it's going to encourage them to be able to go lift a little bit more, go do a little bit more. And now as they're continuing to use it, those muscles are going to be functioning better as well. So they'll be able to run faster, lift harder, not get so sore afterwards. So I think that there's, you know, a huge benefit there. Um, I've been using it along with, interestingly, oxytocin for muscle building, right? So, um, you know, you got some nice shoulders. I, I, I was thinking that you're, I, I mean, I, I can see that you're doing something, right? Yeah. Okay, so, so oxytocin, you know, nasal, or oxytocin. how are you getting your oxytocin? You can you can do nasal, nasal spray or subcutaneous injections of it. So we'll do that with a lot of our, our clients or bodybuilder people because it's a huge anabolic agent. And, you know, we forget about oxytocin as an anabolic agent. So you can use spermidine and oxytocin and get really nice. So you, you know, so you'll, you basically use the spermidine for on a regular basis, usually a hard course of it. And then on a regular basis, and then you use oxytocin, like right after the workouts to get muscle pump and you'll see really right. good muscle production. I talked to a bodybuilder once who swore by, this is going to sound funny, um, like nipple stimulation after a workout to raise oxytocin right. levels. Have right. you heard of this works before? the same way, right? And yeah, you know, and, and it's doing the same thing, you know, okay. so it, it probably can get more oxytocin by actually taking oxytocin, Injecting. but yeah. you, but, but, but the same, it's the same principle. It's just like, you know, that's why bodybuilders who work out together seem to get better results than in working out independently. It's that socialization that increases mm. oxytocin as well. And now okay. what we're all sitting in our houses by ourselves, not seeing people and not socializing and not touching each other. So our oxytocin levels are probably really low. So I yeah. think those the oxytocin along with the spermidine is a really nice combination wow. for people who want to be, you know, get, get more muscle. And especially to get older people started or even young people who have gotten really sarcopenic from being sick or just being unhealthy. It's a really nice thing to get them a little boost. Wow. This is really cool. I had never even thought of oxytocin with it. And uh, I guess it means I'm going to have to play with my nipples. I can do it. <laughs> or you could just hug someone. And since I am in a relationship, you could just cuddle on the couch and get the same more, effect. Yeah, so that, right. that's, that's more likely what I'm going to do. But uh, what about when people shouldn't take it? Like, are there downsides to it? So I guess the, the big question there is cancer. Um, and, and we just don't know yet. It appears to have a very cancer protective Effect. It should, given what it does. So it should, right. And there's a recent study in colorectal cancer that showed it to be very beneficial in helping those markers to reduce. But if you think about now, if I'm if I'm stimulating oxidative phosphorylation, if I'm getting more ATP, cancer cells love energy, right? So am I stimulating some fast-growing cancer cells? And I think the same question comes around with like IGF. Uh, the growth hormone secretagogues. It depends on sort of what school you're in, and and so the, the I guess the you know the the legal answer to that question is probably if you have active cancer, don't use it. 
Um, but there's probably yeah. going to be further evidence coming out to, to, to say maybe some cancers it's good for, maybe some cancers it's not good for. And I think we're, we've been in the same question with like the, you know, the, the IGF, the growth hormone secretagogues, things like that is, you know, are they good? Are they bad? It, it probably is going to depend a lot on what's going on inside the cell. That, that's a really nuanced and, and awesome answer. And thank you for that. It, anything that increases growth can increase cancer. And, and this is one of those things where you have to increase your mitochondrial function, which is anti-cancer, and you have to increase autophagy, which is anti-cancer, anytime exactly. you do something to increase the young stuff that you're doing. But it sounds like, given all of the effects on mitochondria, that spermidine is helping mitochondria. So my rough biohacker assessment, not being a cancer doctor or any kind of doctor, would be, hmm, it's probably okay. But like you said, we don't have studies on it yet other than one where it says it might be good for one kind of cancer. Right. And okay. and I think it's going to be, here's what I think you're going to have to go back to is, you know, it, it's it's why antioxidants are not necessarily good in cancer, right? You want some oxidative stress. So I, I actually think spermidine is going to come out to be very homeostatic. It's going to actually get things back to the way they're supposed to. It's why I'm not a big fan of pounding antioxidants all the time. I think that that is probably yeah. a bad thing. And, you know, and I think because this is so homeostatic, it probably is going to prove to be beneficial. But right now, the kind of rule of thumb is mm, we don't know.